Have you flown recently? Between delayed flights, cramped seating, baggage fees, and the depressing lack of snacks, airplanes have lost their mid-century glamour. But what if you could spend a lot less time on a plane? You might not remember, but there was a plane called the Concorde that flew fast, like really fast. It had a cruising speed of 1,354 miles per hour, which is twice the speed of sound, also known as Mach 2. A flight from New York to London, which typically takes seven hours, would only take three and a half hours going supersonic on the Concorde. Sadly, the Concorde is long gone. Its final flight touched down in 2003, and since then, the Concorde's sonic boom has mostly faded from memory. That's all about to change. A half a dozen startups are gambling on the return of supersonic air travel, and new aviation laws could help speed that comeback. There are questions, of course. Will it be affordable or only for the super rich? What about the environment? And why does anyone need to go that fast? But there's no question that supersonic air travel is cruising back into popularity. So a little bit of history first. Supersonics were all the rage in the 1960s when testing first began for commercial flights, but the planes struggled with high cost and pollution concerns. Ultimately, only one plane saw long-term commercial success, a collaboration between British and French companies called the Concorde. The Concorde's maiden voyage in 1976 kicked off a new era of luxury air travel. Tickets could cost up to $12,000 round trip, which included gourmet meals and a chance to rub elbows with politicians and celebrities. But the biggest selling point was speed. With twice daily service from London to New York, it wasn't uncommon for business people to take day trips and return home before the bars and pubs closed. The Concorde ultimately went out of business for a couple reasons. In July of 2000, a Concorde jet operated by Air France blew up shortly after takeoff, killing 113. And just a year later, the September 11th attacks caused a major setback for the entire aviation industry. The Concorde never recovered. But almost 15 years later, in 2013, NASA began funding a few research projects aimed at reviving supersonics. The funding was modest, only about $2.3 million, but the projects all tackled a different technical challenge facing supersonic travel. For example, while plenty of people want to fly faster than sound, no one wants those planes flying over their homes. In fact, Congress passed a law in 1973 banning supersonic flights from US soil. That's because supersonic aircraft create a trail of deafening sound called a boom carpet. As the plane's nose pushes into the air, it flings aside air molecules and waves of pressure, like a boat creating a wake. When those waves hit the landscape, they create a loud booming noise that could sometimes damage property. NASA wants to figure out how to muffle the sonic boom. It split initial tests between Texas and Florida since air behaves differently at different temperatures and different humidities. And it awarded a $247.5 million contract to Lockheed Martin to develop a quieter supersonic plane. That research may find a foothold soon because right now the FAA is considering lifting that 1973 ban on civil supersonic flight. President Trump is enthusiastic and the aviation industry can't wait. Supersonic air travel, it seems, is coming back into vogue. Samuel Hammond is a research fellow at a libertarian think tank that specializes in aviation theory. A couple of years ago, he and a colleague published a paper called Make America Boom Again. Yeah, I know. Anyway, he thinks supersonic air travel could create new global possibilities far beyond more simple business travel. I was talking to a friend the other day about how cool it would be to have a you know, trans-Pacific NBA. <laughs> you could have teams play an exhi exhibition game in LA and fly to Beijing and play another game the same day. The way Hammond sees it, the whole industry needs to be rethought. What's also, I think, more important is how you know, doing a real phase shift in aviation innovation will inspire people to recognize that like the status quo is not a given. There's still a lot of low-hanging fruit and you know big technological breakthroughs. But all that explains how supersonics are coming back. The reason why is less scientific. Chiefly, it's because very rich people want faster private jets. One company is Arian, a startup designing supersonic business jets for General Electric. Lockheed Martin, the winner of that huge NASA contract, is helping design and produce Arian's AS-2 plane. 
The startup is targeting 2023 for its first flight, followed by a commercial debut in 2025. Another major player is Boom Supersonic, a startup based in Colorado that's building a fleet of supersonic jets for Virgin Airlines. Blake Scholl, chief executive officer and founder of Boom, envisions a new era of connectedness for anyone who can afford it. My kids have a grandpa who lives in Hong Kong and uh, is simply too far away for them to see each other very often. But if that turns into a six or seven hour overnight flight, then all of a sudden uh, they can actually become close. Boom claims its aircraft can travel at a speed of Mach 2.2, or 1,451 miles per hour. Boom hopes to have a fleet of jets ready for passengers by 2020, and the average ticket will cost $5,000. But not everyone is convinced supersonic air travel is worth bringing back. The Concorde was a big polluter, burning two tons of fuel just to taxi and four times as much fuel per passenger as a Boeing 747 jumbo jet. It's unclear whether this new wave of planes will be any better. Boom, Arian, and others claim fuel efficiency will improve, but environmentalists are still alarmed by the resurgence in popularity. Carl Pope is the former executive director of the Sierra Club. It's a terrible idea for the climate because it is an irrevocable fact of physics that Air resistance varies as the square of your speed. To you double the speed, you get four times as many air resistance, and then when you hit the sonic boom, it gets worse. And aviation is going to be put on a very limited fuel budget. I mean, that's going to be one of the outcomes of the climate crisis. Carl said he's worried that investors are so focused on reviving supersonic jets, they won't stop to ask why they're doing it. And this is merely the latest, oh, I have a cool new approach that doesn't take into account how the ecosystem will respond to that cool approach. For all the technical improvements, these new supersonic planes are on track to be every bit as luxurious as the Concorde. So if you regularly fly first class, you could have some new faster options in the future. But if you're stuck in coach with 80% of air travelers, you'll probably be glad just to get some pretzels. Probably more Jagger Yeah. So I'm going to show you the seat he sat in? Yes, absolutely. Freaking lootly. That's his seat. Oh, Me? Sat in that seat. Course, yeah. Jagger That's the first seat I ever picked when I walked in. That's like, oh. awesome. <laughs> My own private concord.